a brand backed by Xiaomi, and already known for producing some of the best budget dash cams out there. 70 Mai, they're back stronger than ever, front and rear module, 4K support, and ADAS, time to inspect their latest model, the A800. Hey, welcome, Tech Road Channel, Michael speaking. How are you doing? Hope you're all safe and sound. As usual, we inspect some cool tech here, and I was very eager to try the new A800 by 70 Mai, which seems to be the first good dash cam with 4K support and front and rear unit below $200. You're of course looking at footage from this very dash cam right now, and it's time to start building up your opinion about its qualities. Because this year, 4K dash cams will become more popular, but I'm still not convinced that this is truly necessary, and it's definitely a big marketing tool to make you upgrade. So the A800 will be competing with a lot more premium and expensive devices, and in terms of hardware, I can put it side by side with masterpieces like the Blackview DR900S and the recently released U1000 by Thinkware, however, at three times cheaper price. Obviously, there are no cloud solutions and real-time information involved, but the features included with the latest 70 Mai model are quite impressive. While I'm testing the A800, there's a crowdfunding campaign where the early bird combos are priced at $119 and claiming a retail price after the campaign to be around $179, but considering the fact that the 70 Mai Pro is about half of that price, let's say that I have some doubts about these numbers. And if you follow my channel regularly, you know my opinion about creating hype using crowdfunding platforms. The unboxing lets us get to know what's included in terms of accessories. So far, I've tried and used each one of the 70 My devices released ever, so I guess I'm well familiar with their portfolio and sort of a fan of their product design philosophy. Inside the box with the main units, besides the A800 front piece, there's a charging cable, tool for easy cable installation, and cigar car charger with two USB outputs, and that's really great. In terms of storage, recordings get stored on a microSD card, and you better use something with the U3 standard, up to 128 gig cards are supported. Leaflet with instructions and screen folio for easy installation, I'm a great fan of this approach because it's very easy to detach. The dashcam has similar form factor to the already popular 70 Mai Pro, with a display, physical buttons for configuration, and adjustable angle of the lens, which makes it compatible with almost any kind of vehicle, trucks, SUVs, and even sports cars. Some specifications to mention, because knowing about the hardware included will set the right expectations for the performance. There's a powerful chipset included, the 8.46 megapixel Sony, IMX 415 image sensor on the front unit, a Galaxy Core Full HD sensor on the rear, inbuilt GPS, a battery to maintain recording in case of sudden power loss, gravity sensor, parking mode, ADAS, Wi-Fi, features that are surprisingly many for a dash cam at that budget. And of course a display, well visible even on a bright day, and quite a nice to have feature for quick configuration. From what 70 Mai used to include, there's no voice assistant, but that's okay I guess. The installation part is easy, it's again based on a quick release plate, which so far is the best kind of mounting mechanism I've ever used, as close to the glass as possible, which eliminates light reflections and is super easy to unmount in case it won't be used for a while. So find a good spot on the windshield, I put it in front of the driver's seat because I have no space elsewhere, but keep in mind it's not recommended to be placed in your view line of sight, so my spot is used only for the demo. Also, make sure to place the unit in an area which is covered by the windshield wipers, otherwise you won't get any proper footage when it's raining. Connecting the power, quite easy to adjust the angle, and the display is very helpful for that procedure too. To install the rear units, you're gonna need a little more time, mostly for hiding the cable, but that will easily work with some good planning. The rear unit is also easy to adjust, and if you want to use parking assistant, think about purchasing a hardware kit, and 70 Mai already offers such one. It is important that you understand that the parking mode is triggered by the gravity sensor, meaning after a shake or collision is detected, so it's very possible that you get a recording of the first seconds after an event occurs, 
and the happening itself will be missing, which is in my opinion not too effective. I've multiple times suggested to 70 Mice team to add at least time-lapse parking mode feature, but no luck so far. Let's hope they're going to enable such an option with a firmware update sometime, because the lack of proper parking mode is the only feature that truly stops me from using it as a primary dashcam. Now, the software part. Configuration is quite easy to handle, and you can use either the buttons or the app. Choices for the resolution, the GPS mode, the picture details, data to be recorded, and parking mode behavior. These are the major sections, and of course you can keep parking mode without hardwire kit, relying on the battery, but obviously that would have a limit of about 10 minutes. Nice to see that there are both NTSC and PAL frame rates included, as well as 27.5 frames per second, which is mostly used in Japan. Based on the way the menus are grouped, I think the interface is touchscreen ready, and maybe that's something 70 My will prepare and consider for the next generations. Very good implementation of ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance System. Surprisingly, it was very easy to set it up, and it's way more precise and accurate even than the ADAS implementation on the much more expensive U1000, which by the way costs like three times more. It's not the first 70 My dashcam with ADAS, but it is their first with the GPS embedded inside the unit and not being a separate part. So I can rate this as a very reliable option. It warns you about vehicles being in front of you, good if you drive a lot in traffic jams, and tells you about lane departures. And a feature I noticed for the first time lets you know when the car in front of you starts to move. Great way to get your attention when the traffic light has just turned green. Motion detected for the vehicle ahead. Motion detected for the vehicle ahead. As for the image quality and the 4K, let's keep on watching together. And if you're careful, you probably notice that if there's direct sunlight on the lens, the image gets soft and blurry, which is quite obvious in scenes like that. Often to be seen with budget-oriented devices and sometimes could be fixed with a lens filter, which at the moment of making this video doesn't seem to exist. If the sunlight is not bothering it that much, image is very sharp, with a lot of details and excellent contrast. Files are not huge because H.265 compression is being used, and 4K lets you see a lot more details in daylight than usual. Obviously, there are some slight disadvantages compared to 1080p sensors in low light, which is well expected due to the pixel density. I'd say awesome performance if we put it side by side with top model from the company Blackview. No matter day or night footage, the A800 delivers fantastic quality, exceptional at that price range, and even what the rear sensor records is acceptable. Resolution there is only up to Full HD. Oh, and if you want to quickly download any of these files without removing the card, there's the 70 My Smartphone app which can help. And it is also the one to be used in case you want to check for firmware updates. This new dash camera can also record audio, so here we are at about 40 km per hour. If you wonder how does the microphone sound, well, that's the kind of quality you could expect. At the end, here are my thoughts about the A800. I think 70 might continue to impress us with innovations and further developments of their anyways great dash cams. This one is that close to be the perfect 150-ish dollar 4K dash cam. There are only two serious flows, no motion detection for parking modes, which can well be compensated if 70 might decide to add a time-lapse parking mode feature, and the battery insight, which I hope to be replaced by a super capacitor for some of their next generations. But other than that, there's nothing else to ask for at that budget, and I'm pretty sure the A800 is on the road to be one of the most successful 2020 4K dashcams. I've already asked you what you think about this UHD resolution with dashcams in another video, so this time let's talk about the parking mode. Is motion detection a must-have, or you're fine with the feature as it is here, triggered after a collision? Let me know of your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll make sure to join the conversation in case you have any follow-up questions. As for links to the products mentioned and shown, you're going to find them all in the description below the video. A kind reminder to support the channel, because creating these videos takes a lot of time and effort, and cheering me up by pressing the thumb up and the subscribe buttons would be great. 
Thank you in advance for that, and thank you for choosing my channel to get to know better this fantastic dashcam. My name is Michael, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Drive safely and have a fantastic day!